What's up guys, welcome to Brookie. On this channel, we make a lot of DIY home gym equipment and the home gym is there. But in today's video, I want to show you how to make your own workbench and that is going to be great to make a lot of products for the home gym. So I think this ties in well with this channel. It's just a workbench with a tabletop and it has a miter saw in that that can fold open. So for this project, I mainly used two by threes and I used nine pieces of timber like those of 2.1 meter. So let's start up by cutting some wood. The first thing that I did was to make three frames. I made it very simple, just make sure they're square and then I screwed them on. For that I used spec screws six by 70. I used about a box for this whole contraption. I wanted this thing to be strong and sturdy, so I used the best screws possible. Although these screws say that they are self-drilling, I did find that it was a lot cleaner when I pre-drilled the holes first. So I really recommend that you take the time to pre-drill all your holes and make sure that everything is nice. Then once I had three frames made, I made some longer beams of a meter long and I secured everything in place. So the measurements that I took were to encompass my Makita sustainers that I have for my router and I also wanted to make sure I have plenty of space for my miter saw to go in and out. My miter saw is 60 centimeters wide so that's basically where I based everything off of and the sustainer is about 30 centimeters deep. I made sure it was all in place and the nice thing about wood is that you can always persuade the wood into its places. You use some clamps, you tighten it down and then the wood will just have to bend or it will crack, but it didn't crack, that's cool. So once the frame is done, it's time for the back panel. So that is really where the miter saw stand is going to be hinged upon and I want that to be plenty strong. So because we're going to have a saw that is going to hang on off of that, I want to really reinforce that. So I used some scrap pieces of wood that I had laying around and I used that against the outer frame. And then I got three beams that go vertically to accept the hinges for the platform for the miter saw. So then it was time to make the frame for the miter saw. This is actually just a frame that fits in the gap. I chose for 60 wide by 40 centimeters deep for the platform. And then I also reinforced it with two other beams in between. So I did that to secure the miter saw to the platform below. In this project, I made it very easy on myself to use a workbench also underneath the table saw. That way, when I was doing the framing, I could already put the hinges in place and make sure everything was level there. And then if I just put in the workbench, we just raise it by the height of the workbench and everything would still remain level. So then I got four wheels, two fixed ones and two swivel ones, so I could still move it around very nicely. And uh, those wheels are like 17 centimeters high, so you have to make sure if you buy wheels that you encompass the height of the wheels with the workbench so that the workbench comes at the right height. So for me, I wanted my workbench to be around one meter high. So I had to know that when I had the wheels that I could reference my frame off of that. So for the tabletop, what I used was plywood that is 34 millimeters thick. Now, what I did was I got a piece that is uh, 60 centimeters by one meter. I cut out the insert for my miter saw and then I used that cutout as a base for my miter saw. So you have the outside piece and you have the base for the miter saw. And then I cut a piece that was uh, a lot better fitted for the insert. And that would be the insert of the table that you have here. The reason I did this is because when you cut a piece out of wood, you also have to count for the thickness of the blade. I screwed everything in with the least amount of screws possible because I want this still to be looking clean. And that's why I also measured that everything was just looking symmetrical. And uh, I think it turned out pretty cool. I just used like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws on the tabletop and it's still plenty strong. What I then did was I put in the 
workbench that's going to sit underneath the miter saw and then I just put in four screws and then I attached the miter saw with some bolts to the moving part. Now one thing to keep in mind is that your miter saw is going to have to be flush with your table. So for the saw if you're going to mount the saw what you also need to make sure of is that it's still once it's attached that it's still able to move that it's still able to pivot that everything is still um, usable. Make sure that you really check out the measures of that. Your miter saw may be completely different so I reckon you check it for your own piece. Now then it was time to make some mounts for my table insert so that I can make this table flush. Uh, I came up with a great idea to use some scraps on the back end of the piece. I had some leftover plywood strips and I used that diagonally and I could put two corners on top of that. Then I used some L brackets in the front to make sure that the table is supported in the front as well. Now one thing that you have to make sure if you put the L brackets in is that your table saw when it comes up that it doesn't interfere with the L brackets. We have the hinge, we have the miter saw in place, we have a place to put in the new bench. Now what you need to do is also when you lift the miter saw up that you can secure it and that you can keep it flat. Something that I did beforehand is when the miter saw table went up that it was protruding a little bit over the working bench. That way I could use these sliding locks to come over the miter saw. That allows me just to put a ring with a screw on and then I can just put the, the sliding lock into that and that locks it in place. The great thing about the screw ring is that you can mount it up or down so you can really adjust a very slightly. The next thing that I did was I made a nice chamfer around the edge of the workbench because that makes it a little bit more manageable if you're rubbing your hand across it's not going to be a sharp edge but it's going to be a nice uh, chamfered edge. I hope you liked this video, I hope you got something out of it. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next or if you want to see more DIY stuff, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below and I guess I'll be seeing you all in the next video.